MLB The Show fans, and welcome back to another feature premiere for MLB The Show 24. I'm Ashley Sanders from the MLB The Show development team here at San Diego Studio. Today, we are diving into some of your favorite MLB The Show modes and highlighting all that's new with tons of new gameplay footage. We know you've been wanting to see more. We'll cover our design direction with Steve Merka and Luis, who will also kick us off with franchise updates. We'll shine a spotlight on Road to the Show with Merka and Molly. Check out the new Road to the Show Draft Combine experience with Justin. And we'll be joined by Drew to talk about all things presentation. Of course, if you haven't already, be sure to check out our previous feature premieres with Storylines The Negro League Season 2 and Storylines Derek Jeter. Check them out now on our YouTube channel. And a huge shout out to all of our fans watching live on Twitch right now and all of our fans catching up with content with video on demand. We see you and we appreciate all of your support and a huge thank you to everybody live reacting to this feature premiere. It's great to get everybody's feedback in real time. Y'all are the real ones. To kick us off, I am joined by Design Director Mirka and Design Manager Luis. How are you, Mirka? I am great, thank you. How are you? Doing well, doing well. Luis, yeah, yeah. how are you? Pretty well, pretty well. Here in the studio, a couple weeks away from launch. It's nice. It's very exciting. The vibe of the studio, you can just feel the palpableness of everybody's emotions. But of course, before we jump into 2024, let's take a moment to reflect on 2023, Mirka. You know, it, it was a great year overall. Uh, we had some successes and we had some valuable and actionable learnings that came out of it. Uh, the team worked hard and it showed with uh, award recognitions for Sports Game of the Year from including IGN, DICE, Op Sports, and National Academy of Video Game Trade Reviewers. Uh, we're very honored to have been to have received those rewards, but it, you know, it sounds like a cliche, but it was great just to be nominated and be there. Uh, and we saw the introduction of a Negro League storyline and, and a feature, an experience that was a long time in the coming. You know, uh, it's a piece of American history as well as our baseball history. Love those answers, Mirka. It's really cool to see the awards and achievement from those long, tireless hours from the studio. And then, of course, always learning, always iterating. But speaking of iteration, Luis, what was your biggest takeaway from MLB The Show 23? Yeah, you just said it. Uh, you know, we, we did a lot of things in 23, and, uh, you know, we, we listened to the community throughout the whole year. We were in tune with what you were saying. We were playtesting internally, and that's informing what we're doing for 24. Uh, so, you know, it's a learning process, uh, and, and we're just trying to put out the best product that, uh, that we can. And uh, listening to you is, is one of our top priorities. Excellent. I love it. So why not just dive right into it? MLB The Show 24, Diamond Dynasty Seasons. I know we released a blog on theshow.com explaining it in all detail, but Mirka, Luis, what can you tell our fans about this change? What can we expect in 24? Well, the team did a lot of strategizing, and they'll have a lot more to say about it in their particular stream, so I don't want to steal any thunder, but I will say that they did some retooling and removed the season overlap that we had previously. These seasons last a lot longer, and there is a reintroduction of the power creep, which is the journey from bad to good that everyone loves and expects in this type of a mode experience. And these changes were fed by listening uh, to the community, checking out the forum posts, uh, getting the survey feedback from everyone who participated. Thank you for doing that. And then taking all of that and then turning it into uh, the ideas that we would go after this year. As you've touched on, Steve, it's incredible to see what we can get out from our fans from surveys to the show.com, the scouting report, community conferences that we host um, throughout the year. Incredible to receive that feedback, see what we can do to make things better in the future. And then, of course, you have spoken to a lot of fans' hearts when uh, you mentioned the power creep. Luis, what is this power creep? How is it returning in MLB The Show 24? Yeah, so, you know, in case uh, you're not familiar with the term, uh, the power creep basically references the progression you're going to feel uh, going from a low 90s uh, player to 99s, uh, whereas last year, you know, 97s, 99s were available uh, day one. This year, you're going to see that progression from the low 90s to the 99s, and that's going to be replicated each subsequent season. So one of our biggest design goals was to give you that new game feeling multiple times throughout the year, 
And we're doing that with season one, season two, season three. As you were saying, Luis, we cannot stress enough how important those surveys are on the show.com through the companion app. And then, of course, we're hosting community conferences all throughout the year, trying to gather all of that feedback. We're seeing everybody's constructive criticism across the social media platforms or MLB the show.com forum posts. And, of course, a huge topic of conversation, especially in both Road to the Show and Diamond Dynasty communities, is what is going to be going on with the centralized ball player, your creative ball player in MLB the Show 24, Mirka. Okay, so we removed centralized ball player in 23, and we removed and severed the ties to DD. So you do not face Joe Randoms in DD. Uh, I can't emphasize it enough that these are two separate modes. So everything you do with your created ball player in Road to Show is only in Road to the Show, and that offline experience remains sacred. We did this as a means to also help us set up for the future when we can do a lot more. You heard it here first, fans. Road of the Show is its own separate mode from Diamond Dynasty. Create a ball player will not be in Diamond Dynasty. Merka, it's excellent to work on a team willing to experiment, see what that ball player provided throughout the Diamond Dynasty experience over the last couple of years, and then go into this new direction to keep building off of it. Awfully exciting. And then another exciting part that everybody is talking about across social media is gameplay. They want to see gameplay. They want to know what it's looking like in MLB The Show 24. Merka, what can you tell us? What can fans expect? Well, gameplay has been trending, you know, in a good spot, and it feels good for the most part, but there's always tweaking that can be done. And our gameplay crew, you know, Chris Gill and company, are always chasing improvement opportunities. They are listening to community feedback and seeing what wins we can get along the way, where we can get them. Um, the power creep will certainly manifest in our gameplay with silver and gold teams playing as one might expect. But however, I'm going to tell you right now that the big fun addition to me has been defensive moments. And, and you know, these are inspired by the Jeter storylines. And these are quick time events, and I like to call them quick time 2.0 events. Uh, they're fun and they offer a lot of position differentiator experiences, making like the corner experience, the corner positions feel unique. Uh, outfield with the intensity of diving and robbing home runs feels really good. And, he, and I play catcher personally every Sunday, go brunch. And I'm uh, playing catcher in our game regularly. And the plays at home have been really fun and, and, you know, fielding pop flies and making tags. So, you know, you'll find these in Road to Show and they're highly addictive. Defensive moments are such a fantastic addition to the game this year. As I'm playing through Storylines, Derek Jeter, as I'm playing with my ball player, Road to the Show, I see these moments start. My heart rate immediately kicks up, and I'm high focused, shifted into gear, trying to make these plays. And as you mentioned, from shortstop to catcher to the outfield, everything is different. There's always something to keep me on edge, keep me excited, and that is something fans are going to love to experience in just a few days. Luis, anything you'd like to add for gameplay? No, just that I'm excited uh, that, you know, we got gameplay to such a great spot. And so we're, we're starting off, you know, on, on the right foot there uh, through just years of polish. And, uh, and you know, keep an eye out for uh, something that Steve mentioned, uh, you know, the uh, with the power creep, quote unquote, returning. Uh, you might see a little bit of a different, uh, you know, feel at the early, early in a season as as opposed to late in the season. More variety there. More variety. That is the game of baseball. Now, for fans wanting to see even more of these gameplay changes, feel free to check out the blog on the show.com detailing everything gameplay. And then, of course, if you want to see it come to life, tune into our dev tourney on March 13th, where we will be playing all day long and we'll be talking about these gameplay changes while seeing them happen in game. And of course, highlighting a bunch of other things added in MLB The Show 24. So tune in on March 13th. And then we'll dive deeper into this when Molly joins us from the Road to the Show design team, but a huge moment to celebrate in MLB The Show 24 is for the first time ever in an MLB affiliated video game, we will have playable women ball players. Mirka Luis, this is a huge addition to an MLB The Show 24 game. Major round of applause. How are you feeling with this new addition to MLB The Show? What does it mean to baseball and baseball fans? Luis, we'll kick it off with you. It's just so momentous. Uh, you know, we've been building toward this for years. And, uh, you know, this is this is the first year you're going to see it. You're going to play it. And, uh, you know, we've uh, we've improved the uh, the narrative experience and wrote to the show because really 
what what does it come down to if you're if you're going to be the first woman player in the majors then you're going to hit all these milestones that are going to be huge and the way you pay that off is through that narrative experience so yeah this is just really exciting it's a great narrative experience and uh, i can't wait for everyone to play it i get goosebumps i get chills each and every time i think about it and talk about it. when when we mentioned it just a moment ago my everything every hair stood up on my body i was like oh my god this is this is a thing. This is real. Um, I don't think momentous is the right word. I think we even need bigger words. I, I, can we invent one? Because here's the thing I think about it, too. We're, it's not that it's brand new in the sense of we see it with uh, other games and their ultimate teams. We see it when uh, we have a WNBA that's represented in other games. You will have a career mode where it's a fully integrated experience. This is a career mode. You make your way through uh, the minors. You make your way to the show. You create that. You're on your way to the Hall of Fame, and you're making an impact along the way. This hasn't really been done, so this is kind of uncharted. Like, how do we how do we navigate this? And it's been an ex just a crazy experience. And and you know when we talk to Molly. It's gonna. She's gonna fill you in. It'd be great. Uh, I don't want to take anything in that space. I can't speak to it, but all I can say is, as somebody who's been close to it, as as somebody in the passenger seat riding along, I've had nothing but the greatest experience in just riding along with this. It's hard not to get those goosebumps. It's hard not to be emotional because of what this means to our baseball community, to our fans. The future starts here, Mirka and Luis. Anything you would like to leave our fans with? Yeah. Uh, we got plans. We got a ton of plans. Uh, as a matter of fact, we're putting together what our North Star looks like. Where do we want this product to go? And and we've we've created a direction. Um, and and there's no shortage. I mean, what does it look like five, seven, ten years out? We've been mapping this. We're starting to kind of get an idea. Uh, we want to set the flag out there, and we know where we're going. And from that, you'll see every decision we make is going to be driven by that. And every part of our game deserves love, and every part of our game will get love. Um, and the North Star map dictates that that will happen. Um, from everything when we're thinking about uh, deeper mode depth, uh, and experience in that part of it to play the game your way. Uh, we want everything to be purposeful, and we do have a vision and a direction. Mirka, you touched on it beautifully. Play your way. We're going to see that. We're going to experience that in Emily the Show 24, and we are just getting started in this feature premiere. We're going to let our fans dive into it right away as we transition to talk about franchise. Luis, what are all the franchise updates coming this year? What is the big point to take away here? So there's a few, but let's start with playing your way. Uh, you know, we uh, we know that 162 games is quite a big investment uh, in franchise. More likely than not, you're going to have to simulate some games. So, you know, we uh, we want you to play play your way. And so, based on uh, these two thoughts, we're introducing custom game entry to franchise. What is this? So, this is basically just a group of conditions that you set that determine when you're going to go in and jump into gameplay. Uh, as you're simulating. So the two main conditions are situation import importance, and that's basically for the stat-savvy fans, we're talking about uh, leverage index here, which you know determines how important, how critical a play is, and uh, innings as well. So you know, let's just talk about an example. Uh, let's say you only want to play the most pivotal moments of a season. Uh, you set a very high situation importance. Uh, you set the ninth inning, the eighth inning, and you're typically going to be coming in with, uh, you know, the bases uh, with uh, the the winning or tying runners on base. Uh, you know, conversely, though, you can go to the other extreme. And let's say you want to have a more like uh, more more traditional experience and and the the same amount of innings per game that you're playing. You can set your situation importance to be low. Come in in the sixth or seventh inning. You're basically turning franchise into a three inning mode instead of a nine inning mode. Uh, so player choice doesn't end uh, once you come into a game. Uh, let's say the game uh, hasn't been uh, you know, decided after the half inning when you came in. Uh, well, then you'll have the choice of uh, simulating until your conditions are met again or just play the rest of the game. 
And of course, you'll have your full suite of options there in Franchise, which quick manage, fast forward to, uh, you know, as I said, play your way. Um, last point I'll make is that uh, the last condition in custom game entry is player highlight moments. And so for, uh, for our longtime fans, these, are f these were formally known as critical situations. And basically, we're going to prompt you to come into the game in big situations like finishing off no hitters or uh, cycles and, uh, you know, situations with run tying r uh, or winning runners on base as well. Uh, but yeah, that is custom game entry in a nutshell. Play your style, Luis, from our hardcore fans who want to experience the full 162 games of a season to our fans who just want to jump into those higher leverage situations. And then, of course, just having that flexibility to have any and every situation in between. It is truly up to our fans to experience and play their most desired play style in franchise and then let's keep it going with these franchise updates we saw the amateur draft was such a cool addition to franchise last year Mirko what can fans expect for this year boy that's correct we implemented amateur draft in 23 and we continued to polish it and work on it through the course of the 23 cycle as you played and that's the approach we want to take for all of our features we don't want to just ship a feature because we can always improve it we can always make it better and that doesn't mean that when we ship the feature, it's not complete. It is. It's a complete playable experience, but we can always make it better. And we don't want to leave any feature behind. We will continue to always improve upon it, even during the course of a year. And just in case you missed it, Steve was talking about it, but we provided quite a few updates to Amateur Draft throughout the 23 cycle, such as uh, generational talents, uh, late bloomers, those deal with the prospects that you're scouting and drafting. Uh, we also added UI improvements such as the draft lottery screen, pitch types, and the amateur player card. So a bunch of stuff was patched in. Let's talk about 24, though. So few more additions to this year. We're starting with improved logic dealing with undrafted and unsigned prospects. So basically, these prospects are progressing in between drafts simulating the experience that these players would get from playing in college and then being uh, eligible for the draft the following year. Uh, we also improved the uh, prospect draft logic for injured players. Uh, basically, you know, there's an inherent risk with injury uh, with these players, and so these players would end up sliding down draft boards in the CPU draft boards, and, you know, it presents an interesting decision for you as the, as the player as well. You know, do you want to take the risk of, uh, of uh, getting this player who might be an injury risk? But if you hit, you know, you've got, a, you've got an amazing prospect on your hands. Uh, we also uh, added the prospect promotion incentive. It's a little bit of a mouthful. That's PPI for short. Uh, it basically, uh, it's a new rule in the majors that encourages teams to promote their best prospects for draft pick uh, compensation. So uh, there's criteria for this to be triggered, basically being top three in the MVP, Cy Young, winning Rookie of the Year. So these are the things that trigger that compensation. And we've also added a screen that helps you track what players are eligible for PPI. Our fans can keep expecting more and more nuanced ways to experience the amateur draft. It's incredible to keep seeing these iterations, Luis. And then, of course, our hardcore fans are going to be incredibly pumped for this newest feature, Player Card Awards tabs, Luis. Yeah, longtime fans, I'm, I'm sure they're going to be pleased. Uh, you know, you're going to finally be able to see awards in the player card. And uh, these will be tracked throughout your experience in franchise. Uh, and even awards that the player has won before this year will show up. So you know that Mike Trout, you know, his page is just going to be stacked. And last but not least, we added a cool new feature for the hardcore, uh, which is basically the ability to start your franchise with a roster that reflects all the latest real-life injuries. So, you know, as an example, you're going to come in, you're going to see Jacob deGrom on the IL, Jason Dominguez. And, you know, this is just a cool new wrinkle for, uh, for people to, you know, start their franchise in the most realistic way possible. From player card awards to more reflective rosters, there's a lot for our fans to grasp and experience in franchise this year. This has been absolutely amazing. Luis, anything else you would like to say or give a shout out to? Well, yeah, uh, shout out to Clayton and the team for, uh, you know, for putting in all the work this year. Uh, you know, this is a, this is a great offering for franchise and, uh, yeah, I'm just really excited for people to get uh, get their hands on it. I know that, 
you know, more than any of the previous uh, past few years uh, in the franchise, I really can't decide what I'm going to sink my teeth into once the game comes out. But uh, just really excited for you to get your hands on it. Thank you so much, Luis. We'll catch you next time. And Mirka, you'll hang around for our next segment. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Women have been a part of baseball for as long as men, playing, coaching, and being fans. And now in MLB The Show 24, we are excited to add women as a playable ball player in Road to the Show. I'm happy to have Molly from the Road to the Show team join us. Molly, hello, welcome. How are you? And please introduce yourself to our fans. Thanks, Ashley. I am so stoked to be here. And hello to everyone listening. My name is Molly, and I'm a narrative game designer on the Road to the Show team here at San Diego Studio. And I'm back. This is Steve, the design director of MLB The Show. I'm happy to be sitting next to this lady as she's an incredible new additive to our team. It's wonderful to have you both here today. We'll be diving into a project that I am both personally and professionally beyond excited about. For the first time ever in a Major League Baseball affiliated video game, we will have playable women ball players. In our first feature premiere, we were all introduced to Tony Stone in Storylines, the Negro League Season 2, and now we will also see women in Road to the Show. Molly, what does this mean to you? Honestly, it means the world to me. Um, you know, while I'm not an athlete myself, I did play lots of sports as a kid uh, and mostly grew up just loving video games, but rarely seeing women or girls on screen, especially in the sports games that my cousins played and I love to watch. Um, you know, there have been huge changes in representation for the industry recently, and I'm so honored to have a part in continuing that journey and hopefully inspiring positive change that extends beyond video games and beyond, beyond our game. I couldn't agree more. Growing up playing video games as well as baseball, it was very difficult to find myself represented. And I remember a meeting I had with lead animator Chris Clements and then Molly Sirota from our player research team, like way back in 2021, just discussing what this edition could look like in the game, what would it all entail. So the amount of conversation that went into this mode was awfully exciting and powerful to be a part of. And then Mirka, overseeing this project, how important was this initiative for you? I mean, I'll just say that it was important for the studio. Like, it was very much backed by the studio uh, through discussions. We we always knew uh, we wanted to do this. It wasn't a question of if, it was a question of when. When, when can we? When will we? Um, and so that very passionate group of people that came together to kind of start the charge of this um, uh, really laid the groundwork for us to get to this moment. And, and we we wanted to provide representation for so many people, so many different people that play our game, you know, the ability to find themselves inside this game. So baseball's for everyone. And that was, that was a driving force for us here. This project has been a long time coming and a lot of time and care has gone into it to not only accurately represent women ball players, but to also honor past, current and future women baseball players. Can you both speak to all that was added to make this come to life? Absolutely. So as Steve mentioned, the initiative sort of set the foundation and, and I joined the studio afterwards. And so, so much had already been done by the time um, I got there and had so many resources to work with. So we had interviews, studies, anecdotes and histories involving women who span generations, roles and experiences all within the sport of baseball. Um, and so to me, always referring back to that source and to them was key to respectfully and authentically representing them and their experiences. Um, and so that, that affected every design choice that we made. Um, and I also had the incredible opportunity to work with Kelsey Whitmore, who if you don't know her, she is so cool. She's a pitcher and outfielder for the Staten Island Ferry Hawks. Um, and she and I worked on some of the new motion capture scenes as well as a handful of new dialogue scenes as well to make sure that we were staying true to that vision throughout. Um, and I encourage everyone listening to check her out. Her story is awesome. She's a killer player and she's an amazing advocate for herself and for women in baseball in general. Yeah, I agree. It was awesome to meet Kelsey. I had that chance, that opportunity as well. And it was just something else. And it was great to even meet the other women who provided their input to us. And to be honest with you, I was, I was kind of starstruck <laughs> when I met most of them. I'm like, wow, I'm actually talking to these people or I'm in the same room with them hearing what they have to say. And it's like, it's pretty impressive. 
As you mentioned, Mirka, especially earlier in this feature premiere, it's hard not to get goosebumps, especially being a part of all these conversations with incredible women represented throughout baseball, baseball history that we've had the pleasure to talk to. And as you added on to Molly, Kelsey Whitmore is absolutely amazing. It's incredible to follow her journey and see what it takes. And then, of course, the support she's providing to her fellow companion ball players, and of course, just inspiring young baseball fans and players alike. And of course, as we took in this feedback from all these conversations, and surveys to really help inform and structure this mode. We know that character customization was a huge topic of conversa conversation. And I know when our fans dive into this mode, they want to know exactly how they're going to be able to customize their player. So Molly, what has been added that our fans can look forward to when they create their ball player? Honestly, there's a lot. I don't want to give too much away, but one of my favorites are all of the new hairstyles that we have added for all players in the game, um, including the addition of new protective hairstyles, which is really, really cool. And uh, One of my favorite upgrades to the character creator is also the hair physics. So whether you are rocking a mullet or some long braids or whatever it is, your hair is going to be rocking out with you with every play, which is just so fun to watch. Um, and we also added so many more recorded first and last names and some fun nicknames. So shout out to our sound team for that. Um, cause it's just awesome to hear your name in game. It is just so cool. And I'm really, really looking forward to more players being able to have that experience myself included. On top of the incredible hair physics that will be seen throughout MLB The Show 24, Mirka, just like Molly, I know you're pumped about the new hair physics as well as the range of color customization. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you're talking to somebody who's had purple, red, like bright red, uh, blue hair. Uh, yeah, now it's gray, but I get to relive some of those fashion moments uh, inside the game. So that's that's really, it's actually really cool. It seems small, but it's so cool once you put it in action. As a leader of the Ponytail Club, to have my hair represented meant the world as I was playing through this mode for the first time. And of course, with all the different diverse hairstyles that we have, the constant iterations are amazing to just better accurately represent our player base. And then with the integration of women ballplayers, how does this compare with the road of the show that all of our fans already know and love? At its core, it is the same road to the show that you know and love, but with some really awesome upgrades and the experience between the male road to the show and the female road to the show experience are the same. You know, it is about being a ball player. You start from the bottom, you work hard, grind your way up to the top and develop your player skills along the way. So that has not changed. You are a ball player, period. Throughout this experience, our fans will notice that our ball player is experiencing her journey to the show alongside her friend, Mia Lewis. Molly, I know this is a huge part of your design work. What went into this decision process for including a friend alongside our ball player's journey? Yeah, that's a great question. So, you know, Road to the Show has not had a buddy character before. Um, and so we wanted to make sure that, you know, if we did it, there was a real reason for it. And it was really going to be impactful. So Mia Lewis is a side character that we added to the female Road to the Show experience, um, really to demonstrate the importance of community and camaraderie amongst women in the sport. This was something that we learned that was incredibly important to the players, coaches, and managers we interviewed. And... One of the things we also want to use Mia for, what she can show us is that a woman's path through the sport can and does look very, very different depending on the person. And so because of this, you'll encounter many unique scenes with Mia um, in the female road to the show experience and her career will evolve alongside yours, at, but it could look different. So the experience that you have and the relationship you form with Mia could look very different than what your friend's experience is. And that dynamic nature is really cool. Yeah, I, I'm going to just add one thing. I want to mention something that you previously said, Molly, if you don't mind, uh, while you're pitching this idea of the friend and everything. Because, again, it, we've never done it before, so we were kind of like, Ooh, how is this going to work and to give you a friend? But uh, something you said really struck with me or stuck really, really close to me was that, you know, you – women are not a monolith right in that sense that we didn't want to paint that picture you know alone because it's it's a very different experience and along with the support you would get from coaches and and your players on the team you, there was having somebody who understood exactly what you were going through which resonated and is like go on tell me more so it's like you built this you and the team built such a really cool experience around that it really pays off that that idea of I'm in this situation, where's where's an additional touchstone that has something of meaning? There's also the idea that, that 
the concept you put in there, there's this underlying bit of tension or drama that's not negative. It's just it exists along with the supportive overarching experience that there's no telling which one of you gets to the majors first. And I thought that was really good, too. So I thought that was a nice little nuance that was added to it. So, again, I mean, kudos to Molly and the team for really bringing this together. As you both said so incredibly intricately, every baseball journey is different but the same. And the root similarity is having that support system. As we know, making it to the show is a huge grind. And practically every baseball story is attributed to some sort of a support system. And then, of course, as our ball player continues her story alongside her friend Mia Lewis, we will also have our cast of new and returning MLB Network talent. We have Sarah Langs, Lauren Shahadi, Melanie Newman, Robert Flores, Carlos Pena, and Dan O'Dowd, and they will all be featured throughout the Road to the Show experience in their MLB Network segments. What can fans expect in their journey to the big leagues when it comes to the MLB Network integration, Molly? Oh man, this is something our whole team is really excited about. We have a ton of new MLB Network content for both the male and the female Road to the Show experiences. Because um, what we really heard from players is that they've you love being talked about. You like feeling important and like you are in the game. And so we really wanted to mimic that as much as possible, inject as much of that as possible. So your major accomplishments will be talked about. Like you feel like a star. Um, and one of the coolest ways we use these MLB Network videos and the female version of the show experience is also to comment on Mia's career and your relationship with her. So there's that added bit of relevance that gives like substance to that relationship, which is just really fun to see. Yeah, it, I tell you what, it's been great to see more additional personalities get added from our network partners. And it gives us fresh voices, fresh stories, different perspectives nice tone and tenor changes. I mean, it's it's really nice. It's a good additive. It's a definitely a good additive. Here comes the pitch. As Sarah Langs always says, baseball is the best, and this is a truly incredible addition to this mode. And then, of course, with our talented MLB Network crew, we have many voices detailing our ball players' journey. How important is it for not only women talking about women when we have the likes of Langs and Newman and Shahadi, but also the male allyship that comes with talking about these women's stories? Mirka, we'll kick it off with you. Oh, I mean, that's a big one, right? Uh, <laughs> It's it's extremely important. Um, allyship is is what it's going to take to help move things forward, to normalize things, right? It's yes, this is new, but it should be the norm. It should be what is what we expect every day when we get up and we get involved with baseball. It's it's that. It's huge. Having that support is again uh, foundational to any progress we want to make at all. So. That's my take. Yeah, Steve, and I think you said it perfectly. For, for real change to happen and stick, it's important for everyone, but especially in this case, men and boys, to see other men uplifting women and treating them as the equals they are. If you can play, you can play. Exactly. A ball player is a ball player at the end of the day. What do you want our fans to take away from this conversation? I really just want any fan to feel that there's a space for them here. There's a space for you here and an experience that is fun, meaningful, and inspiring because that's what baseball is. Yeah, I'll just add that baseball is inclusive. Baseball is for everyone. Uh, everybody should be able to find themselves in uh, their favorite baseball game, which is ours. So we should be able to provide that. We should be able to find yourself and, and just enjoy playing the game. I cannot wait for our fans to dive into this experience. Before we go, is there anyone you would like to thank? Molly, we'll start with you. Uh, just all the women in my life, you know, the grandmothers, aunts, my mom, my sister, my friends, you know, who are my Mia Lewises and who inspire me to make games like this. And uh, especially to the women in baseball who generously shared their time and their stories. Um, so helpful. The a talented and passionate team here at San Diego Studio. I mean, this really came from everyone. Everyone poured everything they had into this. Um, and really, most importantly, to all of you players, new and old, that will play this mode this year. You know, it's it's what keeps it going. It's it's what makes this change possible. I I want to thank my family as well, my, the women in my family, my wife, my friends that all have strong uh, punk rockers in their own right and the way to, to show the strength uh, and the capability of doesn't matter, you're there, you're strong. Um, I also want to thank 
uh, everyone in, in studio, the women in studio that helped drive this along, that helped make this uh, a solid foundation to build off of as well. Uh, our external partners that we talked to, the people who tested everything, gave us that feedback. It, it, is, it has been huge. And in allowing that to, you know, hand that baton to Molly to take it across the finish line and really drive it home. I want to thank you, Molly for being the person to come in and just take this on. It's been a pleasure to ride in the passenger seat with you. And then as you drive this, it's been huge. Um, and I think I'd be remiss if I didn't thank uh, that young lady from years ago when I was eight years old who struck me out in an all-star tournament. Uh, at that time, I was, no, uh, I was batting 667 and she put me down in short order. And in that moment, I think I realized anybody can play. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Thanks to Molly and Mirka for joining, and we will continue on our Road to the Show journey as we made some cool changes to illustrate how your ball player career begins in Road to the Show with the addition of the Draft Combine. I'm happy to be joined by Justin Rowe, who has been key to this edition. J. Rowe, welcome. Please tell our fans what you do here at SDS. Yeah, thanks, Ashley. Yeah, I'm a game designer on Road to the Show. Um, this was one of my first big projects on the Road to the Show team. Um, I was super pumped to get it done. Um, also at the studio, uh, having a baseball background, I get to do a lot of the mocap. Um, so very excited to be a part of this team um, and seeing what we got to do this year. You heard it here first, folks. Blame j Row for all of the super dives he goes all out. j Row, having been with SDS for the last few years, you've also come into the studio with a plethora of baseball knowledge, and of course, you played at a high level. Yeah, no, I was I was extremely blessed to play uh, at South Carolina over there in the SEC on the East Coast. Um, and I was excited to use my knowledge in, in baseball and ability here to uh, portray that in the game. Past, future, and of course you're seeing it here with the Draft Combine. You and the team for over the last couple of years have gone to Phoenix, San Diego to experience this Draft Combine. What was it like? Yeah, we're so lucky that we could, were able to go to, uh, to both the events, not only in Phoenix last year, but in Petco two years ago. And there's so many things that we had no idea that were going on at these combine events uh, in terms of measurable scout day, what scouts are looking for. Um, we got to meet some some great people who, who showed us what the the event was all about. Um, and we're not only going to show that this year, but moving forward. Sounds epic. Now, with that type of access, what did you take away from that experience that really helped with this design? Yeah, uh, there were certain things like uh, the measurable day and the scout day. Um, so not only just the games, but there's a whole day where you get to showcase your abilities in a non-game format. And that's big for uh, for scouts to you know look at players and, and evaluate them, and you will see that this year in our game. I bet our fans can't wait to showcase their ball players in the draft combine. Now talk us through this experience. What can our fans expect and look forward to as they look to increase their draft position while showcasing their talents? Yeah, so like I said, you have that, uh, that first scout day. Uh, there'll be four days total, and the next three days are games. Um, and we have... Some great, some great visuals and some great gameplay that we'll be showcasing throughout those. Um, you'll see what kind of grades you got, uh, your exit velos, and, and some fun little things that you can find uh, throughout the mode. As our ball players are experiencing this draft combine, does their draft position change as they're making their way through each day? Yeah, absolutely. So your your draft position will change, uh, and we'll show that. We have a, a great um, pause screen that we're really excited for. We'll just call it the map for now. Shout out to Jimmy. Uh, I know he was a big fan of that R RPO. Um, yeah, it'll change day to day and teams will pop up and who's interested, who's not interested and your draft stock will, will fluctuate as well, depending on how you're doing. Speaking of gameplay, you are speaking our fans language here. I heard there are new defensive situations introduced in the draft combine and of course throughout other areas of MLB The Show 24. I know there's been some buzz around the community as they're seeing these in our various trailers. Could you speak more on that? Yeah, no, it's something we we're really excited to get in the game this year. Um, we're calling them um, little QTEs, quick time events, for people who know. Um, they're big defensive plays, stuff that, uh, diving plays, maybe that little Jeter jump throw that we might have seen in the trailer. Um, so, yeah, we we're very excited to get that in, and can't wait to hear the, the feedback from the community. I was playing it the other day, and it's literally such a neat experience, making defense even more immersive. Like, I was sweating a little bit out there, making sure I made that play. Uh, to continue on, visuals, menus, what's new here? Yeah, um, the presentations are new, uh, the art's new. There's so many things that are new with this, um, especially getting to go there and to see what we want to put in the game and everyone executing it on the team. Really made everything pop and the experience great. Love the fresh look. When fans are experiencing the draft combine this year, what is one thing you want them to take away with? I want our fans to feel like they are at the combine. That was our goal when designing it. We want you to feel the experience. We want you to feel the pressure, the emotion of everything at this event and make it feel like 
you're getting drafted into the MLB, getting ready for that that big time moment. Love it, J Row. Thank you so much for your time. Before we go, anyone you'd like to shout out or thank? Oh, there's too many people to shout out, but Road to the Show team. Um, great work this year this is uh my first big feature that i was super pumped to be a part of everyone to uh, to art field prez dialogue narrative everyone uh thanks for having me ashley it's a whole team effort thank you so much j Rowe. thank you we have covered a lot but one of the areas that we know our fans love to see updates on is our presentation and the presentation team as always is knocking it out of the park pun is always intended score bugs broadcast styled on field augmented reality stats regional broadcast and of course the fan beloved fan cam and i'm very very happy to be joined by drew to dive into presentation drew welcome how are you and would you please remind our fans what you do at sds sure thanks for all the kind words ashley good to be here um yeah, my name's Drew, and I uh, am a design manager here and also the product owner of Presentation Audio and Commentary. There we go. We have a lot to talk about, so let's get right into it. With the addition of Female Road to the Show, what does minor league presentation look like and sound like this year? Yeah, we kind of just wanted to separate um, the feeling of playing in the minor leagues from the major leagues. So we'll, a couple things. We added a minor league broadcaster, uh, Ben Gelmans. was just terrific. So that's exciting. Um, I think it'll really differentiate that mode. But we also just wanted to make that whole experience feel like you're in the minor leagues. So we have a new minor league presentation package as well. You know, we wanted to still give you all the information you need, but kind of make it feel authentic to that experience. Those were the two big things. And then you mentioned the female road to the show player. Can't be overstated uh, how much work went into creating all the lines from commentary that were needed to support that. Uh, so that was a ma major undertaking this year. A labor of love, but an incredible project. And as you mentioned, Drew, it is so cool to see Ben Gelman be the voice of the minors. You talk about authenticity. Ben has that career of being the voice of the minors for a few years before he joined us here at SDS. Storylines, NLB Season 2, and Derek Jeter. I've been creating and playing in these modes, and every day during the development cycle, I was seeing or hearing something new. What was the team working on here, Drew? I mean, really, the, the, the most fun part about uh, the storylines modes is just taking the stories that Bob Kendrick tells or Derek Jeter tells and being able to put them in, in the field, especially with the Negro Leagues. Like he's describing these things that we don't have footage of and we can kind of re recreate some of those moments. And I think that's really fun for us to develop. And I hope it's it's pretty cool for people to actually kind of put the what they're imagining in their head when Bob's telling these stories into uh, the scenes and the presentations that we we've created for um, a, a lot of moments this year. So there, there's a lot of unique presentations for both of those modes. Absolutely. The presentation is so incredibly immersive as you pair them with Bob Kendrick stories or Jeter's storytelling. It really completes the full picture. Speaking of Jeter's storylines, we have a lot of World Series moments in his storyline and we have a lot of lively crowds that have been revamped this year. How many new crowd animations and commentary did you and the team capture? Uh, well, close to a thousand animations, but we, we created thousand. we created hundreds of new crowd states um, because what we really felt like we were lacking were especially like the anticipatory um, animations and, and feelings that you get when you're watching a, a tight baseball game, especially in the World Series or something like that, where you get like more of the nervous, excited, um, just added nuance. So it's one of those things that's kind of maybe you won't notice it at first and then you look at the crowd and you can kind of see, oh, okay, they're they're on the edges of their seats or they're all standing at the right moments. Um, and then on top of that, we also worked really hard with our major league announcing team to match what the um, the crowd is feeling, you know, and have the same intensity in the same moments. And it goes down to what the players are doing and hopefully their emotion after a base hit matches the excitement level of the games. Second base found a way to make solid contact 
and the winning run comes across to score. Everyone going crazy. Exciting finish to this game today. So that's something we, we worked really hard on this cycle. From the crowd presence to Boog and Singy, I'm already feeling the nervous excitement in these clutch moments. And then on the topic of crowds, I hear even more work has been done to capture more team and stadium specific sounds. Yeah, I mean, our audio team kills it every year. And in my opinion, they're the best, best there is. And um, if you put what they put out in our game and put it up next to a real Major League Baseball game, it sounds the same to me. So they've pushed that even farther and then taken it to the next level really by um, picking out stadium specific sounds that only play in, in specific stadiums. And you hear those after a home run or a strikeout or a great diving catch. with when it seems like there's more pressure he's more calm and settles in he's done an incredible no job with runners in scoring position most guys they get a little tight they start to aim the baseball but for some reason he gets looser the ball comes out. now this ball is well hit this one's got a chance tattooed and gone and just like that they're out front it's one nothing So it really just kind of brings you to wherever your home park is maybe or, or a park that you visited and you can be like, oh, cool, they, they've matched that. So just, a, just another thing that they've done that has killed it this year. With stadium-specific sounds, Drew, we also have stadiums as a whole, and I'm sure as a Mariners fan, you are pumped with the addition of the Kingdom this year. But then, of course, that's not all. The team worked really hard in adding stadium exteriors in the past year, but for MLB The Show 24, there's even more stadium exteriors coming in. Yeah, first of all, not to date myself, but I grew up to go, go and do a lot of games in the Kingdom, so personally stoked about that. Um, yeah, we continue to expand the exteriors. Uh, it takes quite a bit of work to pump those out, but... Um, We've got, uh, we're expanding those and we're going to keep uh, pushing out all the exteriors until we have all of them uh, in the game. We've also done a lot inside the stadiums too with jumbotrons, laser ribbons, um, continue to push that stadium atmosphere. So you should really notice a big change with the in-stadium entertainment as well. That's exciting. I know as a White Sox fan, Guaranteed Rate Field has had their stadium exterior added on top of Wrigley Field. If you want to go to the north side of the city, of course, many more cities joining this feat. And then going back to crowd work, as we enter these stadiums, crowds notoriously hold signs. What can fans of our game look forward to with these presentation of signs throughout the crowds? Yeah, we were kind of just uh, decided to overhaul how that whole system works, uh, which is cool because now um, our artists have done a really great job of creating a system where we can uh, query any player in the game, which includes created players or any major league player. So we don't need to worry about players getting traded anymore. It's like, oh, we can't use this sign any longer. Uh, so it's going to be really cool and just kind of personalize that experience for you know your favorite team or your created player. And then last but not least, what can fans look forward to when it comes to presentation themes? Man, our, our art team kills it every year, um, and this year, I, I mean, I think I feel like I always say this, but uh, they've outdone themselves once again. I, I counted just now, and I think we have eight, eight presentation themes, which is the most we've ever had. Um, we have the the show theme, which we've had now as kind of our national big games, all star game, opening day, postseason, your DD, um, and then 
the return of the regional theme, which has been a big hit, um, that kind of plays along with who you are in a season mode, your your team's regional network, and we've leaned even farther into that with a home team branding and, and stuff. We also talked about it earlier, but a minor league theme to make that um, – feel authentic to to the minor league experience and then we have four era specific themes now to support our storyline modes um and multiple for Derek Jeter because we he plays in the 90s and 2000s and technology changed so we need to kind of change the theme halfway through from the minors to the majors and everything in between you and the presentation team are always rocking it what are you most excited for fans of our game to experience this year We've got way too many people on the Prez commentary audio team for me to go through a bunch of names and I'll probably forget and kick myself later. So um, I just want to first thank the audio team. They killed it this year. Commentary, just a massive undertaking um, for all the stuff we've mentioned in this uh, pod together. Um, Prez Art, bringing it as always, eight new themes. And then uh, just our general presentation team with new scenes, presentations, uh, cameras. We got Ump Cam this year. We got Show Drone. This year, we got a bunch of new fun stuff for everybody. There we go. From the minors, the majors, stadium exteriors, fan expressions, commentary changes all around. You and the team always outdoing yourself. Thank you so much, Drew. Thanks, Ashley. Thank you to our amazing team here at San Diego Studio working on MLB The Show 24. And thank you to our fans for watching and listening on both Twitch and YouTube. We are so excited for you to dive into Road to the Show and franchise modes while seeing all new presentations throughout your MLB The Show 24 playing experience starting on March 19th with early access starting on March 15th. Head over to theshow.com to pre-order now. Of course, we'll catch you all in the dev tourney on March 13th, where we will focus on gameplay and good competition. Look out for the live content feature premiere as we cover updates to Diamond Dynasty and more details on live content coming to MLB The Show 24. Tune in on March 14th at 3 o'clock Pacific Time. If you haven't already, you can follow MLB The Show on X, Instagram, Threads, TikTok, and Facebook. And be sure to sign up for the scouting report for even more news and free packs starting in April. Because we all love packs on packs on packs, go to theshow.com to sign up now. I want to give a huge shout out to our feature premiere team, Colin, Carson, Steven, and Ramon. None of this happens without all of them. I'm Ashley Sanders, and this has been an MLB The Show 24 feature premiere. I'll see you all next week. 